Boys School. Welcome back to the show. This is Word on the Street. I am Mr. Burn One, your host. And today, you all is in trouble. We got Kylie Jenner on the radar. And Word on the Street is Kylie Jenner has become the youngest billionaire on the Forbes list. Now, this is real interesting because uh, this young lady has made herself a self-made billionaire and is the youngest self-made billionaire uh, this far to be inducted on the uh, Forbes list. Um, the product that she has is, let's see here, is Cali Cosmetics. Um, it's a lipstick brand. I'm pretty sure that you all know that already. I wasn't too privy to it. It's something that I'm learning now, so I figured I would just share it. But Kylie Jenner has uh, become a, a billionaire, or, or is slated to become a billionaire, being that she has sold recently 630 million in sales. That was last year. But this year she sold 51% uh, of her company for 600 million. So just alone with you know six, 630 million in sales, uh, then selling half of the company for 600 uh, million, you know, that would, that would put at 1.2 billion. Uh, and that's just, that's just selling, you know, a, a percentage of the company. She still owns 49% of the company. So she's still going to be receiving revenue from the company uh, after, you know, receiving that $600 million uh, payoff, that, uh, like uh, paycheck or whatever you want to call it. Um, the reason that this is so interesting is because as you can see on the thumbnail, um, you have a lot of women out here talking about getting to the, I got to get to the bag. I got to get to the bag. I got to get to the bag. And the bag that you all are chasing, a lot of you women, once you even get that bag, because the, the, the I guess the narrative or the slang term that has developed from getting to the bag came from the women who were wearing the you know, the Gucci bags, the Louis Vuitton bags, the Chanel bags, or those high-end, you know, uh, expensive bags that these women are wearing, uh, basically is where the term getting to the bag comes from. You know, women, in my opinion, basically invented this term because uh, years ago, all the strippers were looking for the dope boy who could buy them a bag. So their term would be, Oh, I gotta get with a guy who can get me to the bag. You know, the 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 uh I can't remember the, the name of this one purse, but it's an expensive fucking bag, man. That, that purse is like fifteen thousand. And that's that, that's just you know that's just normal to some you know high-end people. But uh this bag that they talk about getting to, um the reason why it's so important is because you have a lot of women out here that they're under the impression that uh, getting to the bag, okay, means that they have to be in the strip club, okay, they have to be trying to finesse some nigga out of some money, you know, in, in order to get to the bag, and I think the concept has has really taken its course with getting to the bag, because now, you, you, you know, you have everyone using it as a slang term, oh, I gotta get to the bag, I gotta get to the bag, let, let me get to the bag, and basically now, the context of the slang term getting to the bag is just thrown around so easily to where uh you know you have you, you have people who are not part of you know hip-hop culture and they're they're saying you know they want to get to the bag everybody's want to get to the bag but the activity that a lot of people are engaging in a lot of women you know i don't i don't want to sugarcoat this because this is uh, specifically aimed at women the the uh, activity that women are um, participating in trying to get to that bag is very, very degrading. Let me start there. You have shows like, uh, you know, those hip hop shows. I'm not going to mention any of the show because I don't want them to try to flag the video for, you know, nonsense of me mentioning the show and all, me doing all that. But, um, you know, you have a lot of these shows that these women are on there degrading themselves, they, they're, you know, they're doing it in the name of getting to the bag, which 
Um, I don't really see how that's getting to the bag with, with a lot of the things that they're doing. Um, you know, right now, uh, Megan Thee Stallion, she's, she's, you know, pretty much running the rap game for women right now. Um, even Cardi B, you know, Cardi B came in last year. She made Nicki Minaj take a back seat to, uh, you know, to her moment of uh, fame. And now Megan Thee Stallion has made Cardi B take a backseat, you know, while she gets her moment of fame. And it, it's fine, you know, if you, you have women that are becoming to empower themselves, but the empowerment is only coming through the degradation of yourself. If you look at any of uh, Megan Thee Stallion's, um, like, tour or concert dates or anything like that, you know, it's mostly strip club outfit. You know, ass out, uh, titty showing. Uh, basically, you, you know, she's up there uh, popping up. You know, she she popping it for the camera. You know, and, and basically just you know putting on a, a sex show. You know, the music is is okay. I'm not really a big fan of the music, uh, just because I you know I don't want to hear how uh, you you finessing somebody. You know, every song. Oh, if, if he want to do this for me, he got to pay me. I mean, that's prostitution in, in so many words. He knows it's very expensive to date me, okay? Like, it's, a lot of her music is just like the same content over and over. You know, the, the, the nigga know what it is if he wanna fuck with me. If he wanna mess with me, he gotta be coming with a bag. If he wanna get some of this, he gotta, he gotta pay. Like, it is, it's really like a tiring to hear, should I say. But, the, uh, the, the concerts that I've seen, um, or that I have seen, uh, a lot of them are very degrading um, for her as a woman. Um, maybe years from now, you know, if there's ever, a, 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 you ever have a daughter or anything, you know, what will your daughter think? What, when she looks at that, hey, you know, what she think? Well, look at mommy. Why, why is mommy uh, half naked on stage like that? You know, by the time you're able to explain why you're on stage dressed half naked to someone like a daughter, by the time she's old enough to understand it, she'll probably be out of your control to where you'll be trying to talk her out of doing the same thing that you're doing, but it'll be too late because you, you've already you know, planted the seed in her brain that, hey, if you want attention, this is the type of thing that you have to do to get attention, okay? So, uh, you know, we, we, we would just want to touch on the, you know, Kylie Jenner. You know, she uh, is really, really, you know, putting a stamp and a stain on the term getting to the bag because she's really has gotten to the bag. You know, a lot of y'all are trying to get to the bag and, you know, you, you, you're you not even close. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost ingenious the way she's went from... Even though she comes from a family that has a lot of attention from media, you know, um, you know, the, the, the keeping up with the Kardashians, you know, her introduction to the limelight came through this show. You're coming from a family that has money, but for you to have the mind state inside all the money floating around you to come up with something as simple as taking pictures of yourself and posting them on Instagram with a, uh, you know, with a lipstick brand, just to keep your your your, your followers interested on, in new colors, uh, you know, feeling like, hey, I have to buy this color in order to look good, to be successful. Um, certain colors, depending on uh, certain people, you have certain colors that resonate with them for certain days. You know, someone may get up in the morning and just, you know, from the time that they got up, the first thing that they seen in their brain the, you know, that first foot on the floor as you step out of the bed, all that is vibration that are giving uh, signals to your brain as to what color clothing you want to wear for the day, okay? And then the clothing reflects what color lipstick you're going to wear for the day or even, you know, your makeup and your hair. So uh, by her being able to kind of master that realm of genius, coming from uh, a family that has a lot of money, um, you know, that's that to me, that's that's basically hard work and dedication or, or just, I won't even say hard work, it's basically dedicating yourself 
to coming up with something that you can call your own, even though you know you're in a family of millionaires, everyone around you has money, to even have the dedication to yourself to say, hey, let me buckle down, figure out something for myself that I can be proud of for myself and call it my own. And not only that, but to flip it in the way that she's flipped it is, is genius. I mean, um, from the article that I was reading, I mean, she only has 13 employees. I mean, seven full-time employees, five part-time employees. I mean, you're, you're running almost a billion dollar company off 13 people. And, and, and it's funny that, you know, it's 13 people, uh, but number 13, you know, uh, magical number. Uh, just to be able to conduct business and, and be able to uh, bring a company to those type of numbers, which we know that she's not doing it on her own. Her mother's a, you know, a super marketing mogul, uh, able to help her, uh, you know, reach reach the uh, marketing, uh, the, the markets to market things in. Um, she's, she's pretty good at that. Now, I will say, um, she did have a little bit of, a, of an advantage because she was uh, she was on the show, the car, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians, and she was able to use the money from the show to start up her company. You know, she she had to spend two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to get her company going. Um, but it, you don't have to necessarily start that. You, you know, you don't have to necessarily have that two hundred and fifty thousand to start some type of business. But most people, um, I, when I was you know, relaying the message to my son, try to, you know, get him to understand. You have to start somewhere with something. Just having the idea of, I want to be my own boss or I want to own my own business. I hear this all the time. People say it all the time. I want to open a business. I want to run my own business. I want to do, you know, and my first question would be, what kind of business are you going to run? What, what, what are you going in business to do? A lot of people don't even know. They just, they see other people uh, who have put in the time and the effort, the research, the knowledge, the, you know, the, the, the investment to own a business that they're just looking at monkey see, monkey do. I want to do it too. But you have not done what it takes to own a business. You don't even know what business you, you want to run. Like, are you want to be in clothing? Are you want to be in food? You know, what, what kind of business is it that you want to run? So I would say that's the first thing you need to figure out. You're saying you want to run a business, you know, for uh, her to be able to come up with something as simple as lipstick. I mean, I mean, come on, man. Lipstick has been around for, for years. You know, you have companies out there that have been selling lipstick since way back in the day. I mean, you have uh, women like Marilyn Monroe wearing lipstick. I mean, lipstick's been around forever. But for someone to come in reinvent the wheel of lipstick and then make a billion dollars off of it. She's scheduled to be the youngest billionaire ever. Now, if someone comes, you know, after her, which I'm pretty sure they will, because whenever someone sets the bar, someone always wants to, you know, go a step above. But she's uh, been slated to become the uh, youngest billionaire to be inducted into the Forbes, um, which is, you know, that's not no punk shit. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that takes some hard work and dedication for you to make the Forbes list at almost a billion dollars. Now, the 250,000 that she started the business with, I understand that everyone's not gonna have that money for a startup, you know, but you have to start somewhere. If, if you're on your job today, um, maybe this video can help you uh, have the mental strength to say, you know what, today I'm gonna start putting $25. $25 is nothing. I'm going to start putting $25 a week to the side for the next year and a half or the next two years. I'm going to do as much research as I can about the business that I want to um, I want to start. You know, I'm going to come up with my business model, my business plan, and then I'm going to develop it over the next two years. And then when it's time for me to open my doors for business, I have those $25 a week that I can invest in my business as a big payoff, you know, um, $25 a week, I may be able to do this math in my head, $25 a week, $100 a month, $1,200 a year, so you got $2,400 uh, $2, in two years, let's just say $25, which would be, that's like 1% of, uh, 
of two hundred fifty thousand, which is what uh, Cali Jenner started with. Um, you know, you you can you can start a business with twenty four hundred dollars. Depends on what type of business you you know you want to start. If if you have to say, well, uh, excuse me, if you have to say, well, the business that I'm wanting to start is going to cost me more than twenty five hundred to start up. Okay, so maybe you need to start one business, make money off that business, and then in turn flip that business into another business. Um, I was watching a documentary earlier today about Elon Musk. You know, he has multiple business. He has a, 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 a solar business. He has, you know, the uh, the, the, the rocket uh, business for space travel or something like that. And then he has the Tesla. You know, he has three different businesses. And the Tesla uh, business is, you know, the latest business that he had. And that was the documentary. Um, you know, they were generating the energy, the energy towards Tesla in the documentary that I was looking at because Tesla was uh, on the verge of, you know, going under, but he had to take his money from his other business to keep Tesla afloat. Now, that's neither here nor there, but uh, the, the point of the matter is, if you're not able to come up with 250000 which most people are not, you know, most people, um, they're, they're, they're uh, side note, let me scratch out on that. Fuck that. You, you bitches that be getting them goddamn uh, 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 tax return check. Because it is about that time. And that's a whole nother video. I'm going to do another video on that. But while, while I'm on the topic, you women who get those tax returns every year, you know, you get $5,000, $6,000, $7,000, $8,000. That's more than enough money to start a business. Um, you got you got a lot of you women out there that are getting that money, and within a month's time, the money's gone. You know, it, it's ridiculous for you to, you know, be getting that much money all at one time and then be broke within weeks. You know, a lot of times that money that you that you're getting is enough money for you to be able to pay your rent for the rest of the year. You know, you get your, um, if you were to get a seventy-five hundred dollar check from the IRS. For your taxes, if you were to take five thousand dollars and say, "Hey, man, I stay in an apartment that cost me six hundred dollars. Let me take uh, five thousand dollars of this and let me pay my rent off for for, for ten months out of the year, and only spend twenty five hundred. That way, throughout the year, when I'm getting paid my checks at work, guess what I can do with those? I can save them. I can start me a business when I'm saving my checks from work. I got a whole year worth of checks that I can save." It'll free, it'll free you up financially, you know, for you to be able to think of a way to come up with some type of business. You see what I mean? Um, because obviously, if this this young lady here, you know, being able to come up with something as simple as lipstick to make a billion dollars, I mean, why shouldn't someone else be able to do it? I mean, the, the uh, she also has a deal with Puma. And PacSun. PacSun is a clothing company um, that, you know, I guess she has a little bit of stock or stake in. The, the stock or stake that she has in that company may have helped her get to this $250,000 so that she can invest it into this lipstick business. The, uh, the lipstick business now is starting to venture into, uh, you know, other products that go along with beauty. But, you know, the, the beauty industry collect so much money from women per year. You know, women take money from their children in order to call themselves beautiful. You know, this is this is really something that is really, really detrimental to a family structure when you do not have money and you're out spending the little money that you have on weave, nails, pocketbooks, eyelashes, if we were just to take some of the money that women spend on these things alone, um, you know, the, the, there would be a lot less complaining because there would be a lot more money to go around for the things that you need. That would ease the burden off of some of the males who are out there trying to do the best that they can to provide for their children, but they're always getting the backlash from the women that they're not doing enough because the women want to play victim like they don't have money 
but they go and spend their money in the beauty supply stores, come home broke, and then act like uh, Scooby Doo. You know, I remember. Like, come on, like this is this is getting to the point now to where it's getting obvious that you know we're able to kind of point the finger and show that hey, this is a sore. You know, on the skin of the uh, of the of the family, that's not healing. You know, that sore is not healing. The the family skin is scarred with the scar that is not healing because of the money that has been extracted from the family structure for the the beauty industry. Marinate on that. I mean, seriously. You, you know, a lot of women need to marinate on that and understand that the money that is going into the beauty world, what a lot of women are, are, are saying that they don't have money, this is a lie. This, this, is a, this is a blatant lie that women like to tell when they say that they don't have money. They're lying. They, 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 their statement should be, I don't have any more money after I spent all my money at the beauty supply store, is what they should be saying. But the uh, the Kali Cosmetics sold for fifty uh, sold fifty one percent of the company uh, sold it for six hundred million uh, and and she's uh, basically being put into Forbes more than uh, uh, coming in with more and at a younger age than a Mark Zuckerberg the Facebook guy and a host of others but. This is someone who the women that are, are calling themselves getting to this bag, this is what these women need to step aside and show some of these younger little girls of how to really get to a bag, investing in yourself, not shaking yourself in front of people, hoping that they look at you in love and lust more than the next uh ladies, you know, that's, that's shaking her ass in front of them. You know, hoping dollars fall my way. You know, rain on me. You know what I mean? Like, like, like the, 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 the concept, which I've said before, the concept of the strip club. You have men that go out here and they rob, steal, and kill to go in the strip club to show women that they feel are beautiful or are, are, are as lustful as they want them to be to make these women feel that, like they're the man they rob, steal, and kill to go in the strip club and, and throw the money on the floor like it's trash. Okay? Just, just, just think about that for a minute. You know, you have women that are out here enticing men to go out and rob, kill, and steal from the next man so that he can bring the money to her and throw it on the floor in the strip club like it's trash. Now, the reason that this is so important is because right now in the rap industry, if you're a female that's coming out with some positive uh, music, you know, you, you, you're speaking positively, you're talking to India, I read talk, you wanna let your hair grow, and, they don't want to hear that. You know, if you come in here talking about twerking and shaking your ass and all that, then you're good. You can, you, you can chill for a minute. You know what I'm saying? That's why this is so important because that's a, a, a lot of the music is being generated now to the stripper. The stripper has taken over as the leading female rapper. Okay? you, you had we, we had the MC Lights. We had the, uh, the Yo-Yo. You know, we had the Queen Latifah, we had the DeBrat, you know, we had the Missy Elliott, okay? All of these women represented a different form of, of, of being a woman. But now it's like the vibration that women have uh, used the rap game to empower themselves with has become the most degrading thing that women can do, which is shaking their ass for dollars. Call like it is, you know what I'm saying? If it's a duck and it quack, it's a duck. Now, now don't get me wrong, I'm not against strippers. I'm not against people who go and they make their money, but make it with a cause. We're not looking 
you know, for someone to be a stripper for the rest of your life. You know, if you go, you strip for three, four, five years, you stack up some money, you, you know, you, you got uh, money uh, 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 stacked over here to where you want to do something with it one day, turn it into some type of legitimate business, I, I understand. But if you just, uh, you know, you're a chick that you're in the strip club, you're in there, you're, you're starting to develop the habits of being an alcoholic, you're developing the habits of being a drug addict. You know, you're developing the habits of being a whore. You de you're basically developing the, the habit of a lifetime dependent of a degrading yourself mentality. You know, like you come in, I would never do that. And before you leave, you're doing everything. It, it, ain't, it ain't nothing that you ain't done. You know, everybody done wrote, wrote their name on your ass. You, you know, you... You might as well hand a nigga a marker while he hit, while he hit you so you can write your name on your back with everybody else. You know what I'm saying? It's basically marking his name on the wall. You know, <laughs> Big G was here. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, shout out to um, Kylie Jenner. And today Kylie Jenner gets the, uh, <laughs> the ultimate finesse because, hey man, the girl done finessed the whole industry, the whole beauty industry. She done finessed and cut a big chunk out of the beauty industry and done made a billion dollars. Y'all hoes catch up.